Red Hot American Summer celebrates their 20th anniversary this year, and we think it's about time to celebrate this cult classic comedy that spawned two Netflix TV series, an annotated screenplay, an art show, a tabletop RPG, and a comic book series. So here are seven things you didn't know about Wet Hot American Summer. The phone! The phone! Where's the f phone? Probably. clearly said smear mud on my ass. And I'll tell you something, if you want to smear mud on your ass, smear mud on your ass, just be honest about it. Wet Hot American Summer may be the only movie to effectively slip in a talking can of vegetables, voiced of course by H. John Benjamin. But did you know he originally auditioned for Gary, Jean's exasperated sous chef? Did you say dick cream? He eventually makes an in-person appearance during first day of camp as Mitch, the human before he became the can, but either way, he had enough practice saying Gene, which definitely helps today. I don't know. Gene! Like what? Bob! Lynn! Lynn! What? Gene! Lynn! Oh, Lynn! Gene. I'm leaving! Oh, he's so cute. But maybe you didn't know, if you didn't have ears, that Artie the Beekeeper, aka the camp's self-appointed radio DJ, has been dubbed over by Freaks and Geeks' Sam Levine since 2001. According to David Wayne, the kid they cast to physically play Artie definitely looked and acted the part, but didn't quite have the voice, which we all know is the most important thing for radio. So they outsourced the role to Sam Levine who eventually plays the older version of Artie in Wet Hot American Summer 10 years later. <laughs> Buzz! <laughs> The camp itself is based on David Wayne and Michael Showalter's own experiences at their respective summer camps growing up. Filming, however, took place at Camp Tawanda in eastern Pennsylvania, where one of David Hyde Pierce's Spamalot co-stars used to be a former camper. The Simpsons' own Hank Azaria attended Camp Tawanda from ages 6 through 15 and is referenced in the list of campers Beth calls out. Amanda Klein, Jessica Azaria, Ira Stevenberg, Saul Zimmer. Along with former Israeli Prime Minister David Ben Gurion. Uh, David Ben Gurion. Bonus thing, the camp agreed to let the movie film there, thinking it was a wholesome movie, and Amy Poehler and Paul Rudd even recorded a message for the camp before the camp realized how unwholesome the movie ended up being. Look at Lindsay's chicken legs. Oops. The movie had a small budget, so the entire cast and crew actually stayed in the cabins at camp throughout production in the spring of 2000. When the cast and crew weren't filming though, they were drinking and partying. What else is there to do when production gets caught up in the drought-ending torrential downpour of a Honesdale, Pennsylvania spring? You can see shots of the film where the ground is muddy, rain is dripping from awnings, and you can see people's breaths in front of their faces. In the sequel series 10 years later, however, it was arrested development levels of difficulty to schedule all these now big-name actors, so they had to use green screen to get everyone in one scene. While now the cast has gone on to headline some of the best comedies in film and television, back then Wet Hot American Summer was many of the cast's debut starring film roles, like A-list actors slash director slash producers Susie and Ben. I mean, Amy Poehler and Bradley Cooper. In fact, Bradley Cooper was so fresh out of the actor's studio that he missed his graduation because he was filming that steamy soccer ball sex scene with Michael Ian Black. However, for all the fun the cast and crew had making the movie, that love wasn't reciprocated. Made for $1.8 million, critically panned at Sundance, and only grossing $300,000, the film was a critical and financial bomb at the box office. Roger Ebert even wrote a cheeky review based on the letters from camp Hello Mother, Hello Father song by Alan Sherman, and ultimately gave Wet Hot one star. Though, even if he didn't like the movie, the fact that he was inspired such a review must mean that Ebert still had fun with it deep down inside, and that's really the film's lasting impact. When I rise, bring it to oh, what time is it? Um, 9, 9.30. I'm so late. I have oh. to go meet Jim Stansel. You know Jim? Uh huh. He's that guy. So I'll uh, talk to you later, okay? Okay. 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 
Jim Stansel is a man of many jobs according to the Wayne and Show Walter verse. What started off as a throwaway name in the original movie has become an in-universe joke. In First Day of Camp, Michael Cera plays the man himself, a lawyer who was then assassinated after winning a toxic waste case against Sen Star and the US government. In another Wayne written and directed movie role models, Ken Marino who plays Victor in Wet Hot is also named Jim Stansel, but he's less of a cool guy. Jim has also made appearances in The Ten as an anchorman and Wanderlust as a commercial real estate developer. But who is the real Jim Stansel? Well, Jim was just a friend of David Wayne's dad. Wayne liked the name so much that he just started using it in all of his movies. And what a good strong name that is. We want to take on the US government. The US government, you say? Hold on my calls. In what is arguably the best scene in the movie, in my opinion and objectively, Beth and the counselors go into Waterville and get into a lot of hijinks like buying beers, shooting up heroin in a crack house, and beating up old ladies. You know, normal summertime stuff. And while that last one may be cruel and unusual punishment on an unsuspecting citizen, in the Wet Hot American Summer comic series, which takes place at the end of the first week of camp, we learn why this old lady was beaten up and robbed. Hint, it has to do with birds. Or more like it had to do with the old lady wanting the camp to be shut down because she was not pleased with their youthful hijinks like porn and littering. Either way, it's always fun to go into town. Even for an hour. <laughs> Molly Shannon's Gale has a long list of past lovers that's more fleshed out in the shows. Of course, we learn about Jean's alter ego, Jonas Jurgensen, and meet Judah Friedlander's Ron as a G-man under President Reagan. But there's also an unexpected Marvel connection beyond Paul Rudd and Bradley Cooper. And I guess Elizabeth Banks? That's right, I am talking about Randall Park. In First Day of Camp, he plays Jeff, Gale's whirlwind librarian lover. Now stick with me here. Park also makes an appearance as Paul Rudd's co-worker pre-Ant-Man and the Wasp as Martinson in They Came Together, which was also written by David Wayne and Michael Showalter. But here's the huge bonus thing. You know who was also in They Came Together? WandaVision's Tayona Paris plays Amy Poehler's employee named, get this, Wanda. Ultimately, this thing doesn't have anything to do with Wet Hot American Summer, but I think I made a compelling argument to give David Wayne and Michael Showalter the X-Men. I mean, we already have a love triangle, Beth is pretty much Professor X, and most importantly, David Hyde Pierce's Fraser co-star is already in it. Let's get this thin off the ground. Marvel, have your people call me. I have no people. I said no! That's it for this episode of Things You Didn't Know, but let us know in the comments if you also enjoy heading into town, even for an hour. For more true-ish things about movies and sometimes Marvel's retroactive impact on cult comedies, make sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.